doctors be paid their arrears owned by the government. Up to now, the doctors in this country are owned uh, uh, some money by the government. Number two, that the interns be deployed. For the past one year, doctors who have trained, taken six years to train, and uh, every year a doctor is trained with an average of around 600,000 Kenya shillings, which comes to around 3.6 million Kenya shillings. Then, after finishing your degree, you are not deployed anywhere. Clear on matters education that this government, in itself, from the executive, is not educated. When you look at the members of the cabinet, they are not educated. Therefore, they cannot give preference to education in this country. So on matters capitation, the government is involved in a PR exercise. Look at what President Ruto has done in the last one year. Look at the marking of the KCP examination. Just marking can be a problem to this government. What about releasing money? Number two, the KCC exams. Marking of the KCC exams was a problem. What about now? Number three, the varsity education. The government decided to increase fees such that the minimal amount of money for a, for a social science course, an art course, is costing 300,000 Kenya shillings. Mm. Where will Amamamboga get that 300,000 Kenya shillings to educate their children? Up to now, as we speak, over 50,000 students haven't reported to Form 1. Up to now. But the government keeps saying that, you see, they are involved in matters education. They are not. So Ruto should not lie to us about issues of education, and we will start querying about his credentials. Because a, a, a sane president cannot employ a person who is not even qualified to be a secretary. And, uh, this, is an intentional, this is an intentional form of sabotage because the government wants parents to pay fee using the e-citizen so that they can collect that money. Those parents are paying fees using chicken, goats, and some of them are working for those schools. How will you put a goat inside e-citizen? Exactly. You know, you know if, if, the government, if the government fails to release this money, it is very simple. This team that you are seeing here, the ground team that you are seeing here, is out to sacrifice for the interest of Kenyans. We, we are going to put from primary school kids. From the time of colonialism, from the fight for multipartism, from the fight for promulgation of the new constitution, and to the fight for devolution. Every generation has had a chance to rise up and do what needed to be done. We are now called upon as a generation to rise up and do what needs to be done. We fought democracy, we fought new constitution, we fought multipartism. Now it's time for economic emancipation. This is the duty of our generation. And we are here to announce that there is a new awakening the young, the energetic, the charismatic, the revolutionary have arisen and is not going to be business as usual on the streets. We are going to rise up and take up our duty, our cardinal duty to protect and preserve the interests of the local Mwanainchi. On the issue of the health, it has been my proposal, even during the BBI and even the NADICO report, that we must have a health service commission. Just the way we have a teacher service commission, we no longer hear about a teacher strike. Disclaimer, yes, I want to give a disclaimer that I'm not as Mio, but I belong to the, to the group of MPs that believe that the power of leaders emanate from the voters. And I come from a, a, a piece of cloth where I believe in the leadership model of that I am a trustee of the people that voted for me and I am their delegate so I speak their language because I am a delegate I am a trusted delegate so if my people in Gedongori do not want taxes I speak for them as their delegate I have no mandate to speak my issues that pertains my people without their permission and that is why I have jo joined this group called the ground team this is the team that listens to the ground, and that is why I have joined this team. We took an oath, and one of the last uh, lines in our oath is that uh, is a, uh, there's a word there that says conscientiously mm. discharge our duties. Mm. It means all members of parliament should use their conscience. Mm. 
That is why when you saw some of us opposing the finance bill, we didn't do it purely because of, of, of uh, the, the, whether you're in Azimio or even Kenya Quantas, because we used our conscience. And we can see some of the things that are going, that are happening in our country are wrong. The first issue that I want to talk about is the issue that you've seen in the medical uh, sector. We have our doctors that are on strike. And I also want to bring another issue of NHIF. Because NHIF right now is refusing to make payments, especially in private hospitals. So we have so many people who have bills that they are unable to pay. And that means they are, they are detained by the doctors or the hospitals. That is something that we must insist. And if the CS is unable to do that job, we'd ask her, step aside. Let somebody else take over and be able to handle that issue. I can say it categorically that uh, we are now having a looming health crisis and uh, we will be supporting our doctors in this matter. If they are going to walk in the street, we are together because we are the ground street. So the Sky team has failed to listen to our doctors. Mm -hmm. Number two, the issues we are already we are facing, we are in Lacuna State. We don't have any IABC system in place. One constituency has gone almost a year without representation in the parliament. We are experiencing what we call constitutional crisis. We want full and immediate implementation of Nantico report as soon as possible. The other issue of fertilizer, as you have heard and even witnessed, we have fake fertilizer. And I was shocked by one of the CS uh, member here saying that we don't have a fake fertilizer. Well, our farmers are stressing it. We need that.